Well, what's up, everyone? It's uh, Jason here, and welcome to another Motivation Monday. I've got Justin here with me, and Hope as well. And uh, today is a little bittersweet because it is actually the last of our uh, series called What's the Point? The Parables of Jesus. So this is our last parable. We're never going to talk about parables again, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, but you can read about them all the time. Yeah, um, there's plenty more that we didn't cover in this series, so keep yeah. reading them. So we're really excited, though, to talk about this one to finish it up. Um, but we also got something coming up on Wednesday. Uh, we're having a serve day, so we're really excited about that. Um, from 2.30 to 5, we'll be um, here um, serving at church as well as serving at um, a local food pantry. Um, so hope you want to tell us about that real quick. Yeah, so there are two opportunities to serve to sign up for. Um, and one of those is going to be at the food pantry, Western Fairfax Christian Ministry. Um, well, we'll just be able to help serve them so that they can further their ministry. Yeah. So yeah, and we're also going to be here at CBC doing some painting in the middle school stairwell. If you've been in there, you know the walls are a little boring, a little plain, so we're going to add some color to it, make it look nice, and that'll be fun. So yeah. Definitely, yeah. So we're really excited. If you haven't signed up already, uh, we really encourage you to do so. Go um, to cbcva.org slash studentsummer, and you scroll down to the Wednesday night events, and you'll see that one there. So we'll finish up, and we'll do some ice cream afterwards, because, hey, you got to have ice cream at the end. So <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. All the details are online, so go there and register. So we're really excited about that, but now we're going to finish up with our series. Absolutely. So we're on the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. So this is going to be Luke 18, 9 through 14. So I'm going to jump right in. <clears throat> he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. <clears throat> but the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. <clears throat> so just to like get some context of this parable, like it says, some were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. So this is who Jesus was talking to. It was these Pharisees who thought that they were holier than everyone else, that they were giving tithes, they were fasting twice a week. Um, and Jesus was like, wow, you, you think you're better than everyone else. And I, I don't like that, which is why he told this parable. Um, but I think the original audience, some of the Jews that may have heard this would have been shocked um, that Jesus was kind of telling this to the Pharisees because the Pharisees were the ones who were pursuing God, who were doing so many things right. But Jesus said, you're not treating people well. You're acting proud. And I don't love that. Um, so two men went into the temple. That's the parable. One's the Pharisee who's doing all this great stuff but thinks he's all that in a bag of chips. And then there's the ta tax collector who's like, I know I don't got it. I'm messing up all the time. Um, so, Lord, please be merciful. So those are the two men in this parable. Yeah. And so when I look at this parable, something that stands out to me is that there's an obvious pride issue that I think a lot of us have. You know, so many of us take pride in, in our own works, and I think that's really highlighted in this parable. And that caused me to think of a couple different examples I've seen that play out in real life. The first one that comes to mind, you know, I'm always talking about sports, so this is one, but mm -hmm. athletes all the time, they get injured in games and they don't want to come out of games, right? They think, oh, I'm good, coach, leave me in. Like, this used to happen all the time before the concussion stuff in the NFL. You would see a dude just get completely destroyed, and then he'd say, no, I'm fine, I'm, I'm staying in the game. And uh, the coach would be like, all right, whatever. And then you see him lining up on, like, the wrong side of the ball next play. Stuff like that would always happen. And I always had this friend in high school. This makes me think of another example. I had this friend in high school who would convince himself that he wasn't sick. And this sounds like a crazy concept. We all were like, dude, you need to go see a doctor. Like, what are you talking about? But he would always tell us, no, dude, like being sick, it's all mental. Like, if I just convince myself that I'm not sick, then I won't be sick. And like I said, dude, you're crazy. Like, if that was true, 
none of this would be going on right now. So we told him all the time, like, dude, you're wrong. You got to go see a doctor. And so I kind of share those two, like, silly examples, because if you never admit you're sick, you'll never go see a doctor. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, if you never admit that there's sin in your life, you're never going to go seek a savior. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was something that really stood out to me in this parable. It's just the difference between the pride that the Pharisee had and the humble posture that the, uh, the tax collector in this story had. The, the Pharisee was so busy comparing himself to other people. He was, he was talking about his works and all that he had accomplished, but the, the tax collector was the exact opposite. When he went to pray to God, he, he wasn't listing accomplishments he's done. He had the completely different attitude. He said, I'm a sinner and I'm in need of your grace. And so I love the humble posture that, that the tax collector goes to God with in this parable. And I think it's something that's so important for us to live out in our everyday lives. And so when we talk about this idea of humility, which is so present in this parable here, it causes me to think of, of this verse that's found actually in two places in the New Testament. So you guys know it's important then. But mm -hmm. James 4, 6, and it's also found in 1 Peter uh, 5, 5. But it says this, uh, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I love that verse. Um, and obviously, like uh, Justin was saying, that you can find that in multiple places in the New Testament. This idea of God opposes the proud, but grace, gives grace to the humble. And that's our bottom line for this, uh, this parable, is that God does, you know, oppose the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And I really like that because it really, um, you know, he mentions it in the parable at the end. He says, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And if you're with us early in the series, we actually talked about another parable. He makes reference to that same phrase about the, the exalted will be humbled and the humble will be exalted. And so this posture that we have, like, it can be hard. We don't want to humble ourselves. We don't want to admit that we have a problem. But when we do that, that's when good things can happen. That's when we can be exalted. But then when we come with a posture of trying to exalt ourselves, that's when we can be humbled. And that's what was happening in this parable and the point that Jesus was trying to make. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, like you said, bottom line is God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Um, but if you're anyone like me, sometimes when I was in high school, I was like, okay, sweet. Humility, got to pursue humility. How do I do that? Like, I know that I'm proud in some of these areas, and I don't love that I'm proud, and I, sometimes I don't treat people the way and serve them the way that I know God wants me to, but I don't know how to just make myself humble. Um, so we've come up with a few action steps that you can take um, to kind of work on cultivating humility. Yeah, and so the first one that, that we wanted to share with you guys is simply pray like the tax collector in this parable. And I would challenge you guys to, to pray a prayer like that this week. And I know most of us, we would never actually pray like the Pharisee was. I, I doubt there's anyone here who's like, God, thank you that I'm so good at reading my Bible this week. Like, oftentimes, we probably don't do that. But how well, many I do that, Justin. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> you know. Well, Jason's the best. <laughs> anyways. Just kidding. Anyways, yeah. So I'm sure a lot of us, we may not pray prayers that sound exactly like that. But how many times do we pause and actually pray like the tax collector in this parable and say, God, there's, there's been times where I've messed up this week, but I'm going to you because you offer grace, you offer forgiveness, and you offer love. And so I would encourage you guys to just slow down this week and take time to just pray that on a daily basis. Just come to God with that posture of humility. And one thing with the posture, um, like in the verse it says that... Um, the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven. So he had a heart posture of humility, but he also had a physical posture of humility where he wasn't just looking up to God. And sometimes what's really helpful for me in praying is sometimes to physically get on your knees because um, that's a humble position. And sometimes physically being on your knees helps you to get that heart posture of humility. Yeah. And I think another uh, practical next step is really, it kind of has to do with your mindset a little bit, um, your, your attitude, so to speak. And that's this, uh, it's to use more thumbs, less fingers, more thumbs and less fingers. In our culture, in our world, and it's very easy for us to get into this, this attitude, we'll look at what they're doing, look at what they're doing. And that's what the Pharisee was doing. He's like, man, 
at least I'm not like those people. You know, I pray, I do all these extra things, I'm fasting, look at me, at least I'm not like those people. And I think that's a very unhealthy posture to have. It's a very unhealthy attitude to have. And in many ways, we all need to recognize that we all have problems. We all have things that we need to take ownership of. No one here is, is immune to sin and the, and the struggles. We all have things in our past that we're not proud of. And so the idea, the, the attitude of FF, you know, when we're coming to a situation, maybe it's obviously with our relationship with God being, hey, God, have mercy on me like the tax collector was. Uh, but also, too, in our relationships with others, having an attitude of it's, it's quick to point out what someone else is doing wrong and say, hey, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. At least I'm not like that person. But we need to be quick to be careful to stop, not do that. Instead, have a posture, an attitude of saying, you know what? Yeah, maybe they're doing that, but, you know, I've got some problems, too. And I shouldn't be so quick to judge that person when I've got the same problem as well. Yeah. And so our, our um, final, like, next step is to act with a humble posture. Um, humility can be kind of like a heady term, like, oh, I just need to be more humble. Um, but it's the opposite of pride. And so pride is putting your needs, your desires above other people's. And so what humility looks like is putting other people's and the Lord's will and desires and needs above your own. And sometimes that feeling might not be there. Sometimes you're like, mm, I'm not really feeling like serving and putting their needs above theirs. Sometimes the first step is to act with humility. And often the feeling will follow of like gratitude and service and appreciation for them. But sometimes the first thing you need to do is act like you're being humble, act to serve them, um, even if you're not feeling it. Um, so that's the third one. Awesome. Yeah, and just to kind of close out this series, uh, we've talked about a lot of different parables here. And throughout most of them, um, you know, with the parable of the lost sheep, we talked about going after the one. We talked about making the invite the week before that. So I want to kind of tie all this together, all these parables. And I want to tie it in with this idea of humility and what it means to reach others. And I think if we were to all put this into practice, if we were all to put on this humble mindset, that would help us with reaching others because no one wants to be around someone who's prideful and arrogant. That's, that's not very attractive to other people. But when you approach people with a humble posture saying, hey, I've, I've messed up before. I've been where you've been. But, but the God we serve is a God of love and grace and forgiveness, and he's willing to look past all that. And I think when we put on that attitude, we can be much more effective in reaching others. And so that's kind of what I wanted to share just to kind of wrap all this up and tie it together for our series, What's the Point? That's great. I love that. And I think that's a great posture for us to have, especially as we get ready for a new school year. I know for a lot of you guys, you're trying to, you know, you, you, I'm sure you guys got the news of what it's going to look like and, you know, being online, doing a lot of those things. It's, it's a lot to process as you yeah. kind of get ready for a new season. So um, with that, we're actually going to be starting a new series in August called It Is Written. And um, it's kind of based on uh, Matthew 4, and Jesus was tempted by the, the Satan, by the enemy, uh, multiple times. And each time, he countered that temptation with saying this phrase, it is written. And so over this series, we're going to look at some things. We're going to have some different people come and share, some students come and share, um, some verses, some passages, some scripture that really is helping them through this difficult season, helping them give them hope and strength as they prepare for what is next. And so over the month of August, you're going to hear from a lot of different folks. I'm really excited about um, some of the things they have to share and just certain passages that have been meaningful for them because one thing that we can do is reference and hold on to scripture, hold on to the truth that can help us with regardless of whatever it is we face. So, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited for you to be able to hear from them um, as they share um, the hope that they found in Jesus. So we're excited. Um, this is actually Hope's uh, last uh, Motivation Monday with us. Um, so it's kind of sad. We're... Uh, <laughs> She's motivated to um, to move on. She's mm, like, "Hey, yeah. I can't stand just Justin and Jason anymore." Yeah, I just need a break, really. So, uh, <laughs> College no. is a thing. <laughs> but I know for you guys, um, I know for a lot of girls, you got the opportunity to hang out with her and you know build a relationship. And so we're really thankful for you, Hope, and just the ministry and the blessing that you've been for them and for us. Um, 
and uh, obviously with all the events we've done here. So we're really excited. We're thankful for you. We're proud of you um, in a humble, prideful way. Oh, thank if you. that makes sense. Yeah, uh, uh-huh. Anyway, careful uh-huh. now about right. word choice. <laughs> but um, we're excited for you. And um, as you go back to, to Regent, uh, we know you're going to do some extraordinary things down there. So, so we're thankful for you and I'm excited for what's next. Thank you. And I love you guys. And I'm rooting for you even as I, as I go back to Virginia Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Sweet. Well, we hope this uh, Motivation Monday was an encouragement for you as you go into this week. So you guys have a wonderful week, and hopefully we'll see you Wednesday. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.